everyone, this is Bob Martin with the Nautilus Dry Docks. This is going to be a short video on the setup of the battery and the link monitor electronic module for your submarine. Now basically the BLM unit uh, is a failsafe device that monitors the battery voltage um, and it also keeps track of loss of signal uh, events and it, it will blow ballast in the case of a loss of signal. Very slick unit, nice and tiny. Um, looks something like this comes with uh, full instructions so uh, I've got a two and a half inch Gata watertight cylinder or sub driver here in front of me you're gonna walk through the setup of the battery and link monitor so you can see how you set all of your different failsafe positions and options in the unit let's get started all right before we get started let's talk about the uh, various connections to the unit. In this particular case, you need to have power uh, coming into the unit, and that's directly from the uh, battery. And we have a connection for the failsafe, uh, or the other two. We have a failsafe channel in and a failsafe channel out, and that's going to be our ballast channel. So I've got a splitter on here because I've got a pump style um, SAS ballast system in this particular sub driver. So one of these goes to the blow servo and the other one, uh, or sorry, to the vent servo and the other one goes to the, the pump, the blow pump right here. So you're going to connect the uh, Y harness to the um, pins on the back there and then you're going to collect the lead to the appropriate channel on your receiver. In this particular case I've chosen uh, channel 5. Alright, this is the uh, decision tree that you're going to want to write down to make the setup of your battery link monitor nice and easy. The first thing you need to make a decision about uh, or find out about is whether or not your receiver has a built-in failsafe. Uh, typically a PPM uh, receiver does not have a built-in failsafe. Unfortunately, that's the default setting on the battery link and monitor. So if you do not have um, a failsafe function built into your receiver, you can actually skip that step. Uh, second one, you're going to need to talk about what happens at the three different stages of the failsafe um, protocols. The first one is what happens during the first failsafe stage. The second one is what happens when it's actually trying to correct a failsafe situation. And the third one is what happens after it's attempted to correct the failsafe situation. So in practical application, uh, it detects a loss of signal, for example. It's going to uh, wait for whatever period of time you determine in the next stage. It is then going to blow the ballast for however long we set in the next stage. And once it's done, it's going to go back uh, to neutral again. The other thing we've got to do in the next stage is figure out our duration. So that first um, duration for failsafe one, we have the failure. How long is it going to wait before it attempts to correct the issue? Um, I've decided on five seconds. That's enough to eliminate momentary glitches. It's five seconds uh, and then your failsafe protocol will engage. The next one is how long it attempts to correct the failsafe situation. So in this case, how long is it going to blow ballast for? And again, I've got five seconds on there. And then after that, it moves into failsafe stage three um, until the situation is resolved. The last thing you want to do is uh, take a look at the handy dandy included chart in the instructions. Find the battery that you're using and the associated number. So in my particular case, uh, I have a lithium polymer battery of 11.1 volts. It's a 3S cell. Uh, my blink count is going to be two, according to this chart. So there you go. Uh, keep that handy and we will move into the actual programming. All right, let's get started. I've walked you through what the connections look like. Now we're going to uh, enter setup mode. We're going to press and hold the set button. And then we're going to power on our unit. What should happen is your 25% LED should turn on solid red. 
we're going to move on to setting up our failsafe uh, receiver. And in order to navigate to that menu option, we're going to use the ballast channel on our transmitter. And you can see that I can cycle through all the different options by clicking through. And we want the 100% LED to illuminate. Press and hold the set button. The flashing 25% LED indicates that this is a non-fail safe receiver. That's exactly what we want. I'm going to press the set button and we're back to our main menu again. Now we're going to go into our fail safe position setup and we're going to look for the 75% LED to illuminate. Press and hold. All right. Fail safe stage one. What happens in fail safe one? Neutral. My transmitter is in neutral position. We can see that the servos and the pump are in neutral position. That's exactly what I want. Press and hold. Fail safe stage two. I want the pump to kick on. So I'm going to do that. And then once it's in that position, I'm going to hit the set button. Failsafe stage three, neutral again, no commands, press and hold. It's very happy, cycle through the lights, back to 25% in the main menu. Now we're gonna go into the duration setup and we're gonna be looking for the 100% the and the 75% LED to illuminate. There we go. Press and hold. So the blinking is the number of seconds the first fail safe position will be held for. One second of delay for every blink. To increase the count, you hold the transmitter stick all the way to the end. And when the blink pattern completes, if the transmitter stick is at the end of the travel, the blink count will be increased by one on the next pattern. When it's blinking the right number of seconds, we press and hold setup until it stops blinking. So taking a look at this, it looks like we have a one second duration. Two seconds. Three seconds. four seconds, five seconds. That's what we want. Press and hold. Now we're going to do the same thing with two. I'm just basically going to press and hold down the um, transmitter lever until we get five blinks in a row. One, two, three, four, five. Press and hold. Everything's happy. Back. All right, now we are going to set our battery. And in order to do that, again, according to the instructions, we're going to look for the 50% LED to illuminate. 50%. Pressing set. We got one blink on there and again we're looking for two in this particular case one two that's exactly what we want pressing and holding and now the cell count we're looking to to basically tell the unit how many cells of this lithium polymer battery has in, the, in this particular case, it's a three cell, so we are looking to input a value of two according to this chart. Pressing and holding, and back to main menu. All right, so to enter, uh, exit setup mode, I just hit the set button. You can see that the battery link is saying that we've got a full charge on our battery. 
Now what we can do is test the functionality of this and in order to do that I am going to turn off my transmitter. Hopefully five seconds will elapse and pump should kick on for five seconds and then stop. Let's take a look. That was pretty darn cool. I'm going to turn the power back on my transmitter. Battery link is happy. Batteries are charged up. Everything seems to be working. So there you go, guys. Uh, you know, it's a bit of a complicated setup. I do recommend going through every menu item setting the correct one don't skip anything make sure you got the right settings in there full comprehensive instructions uh, are included but hopefully this little video will make it a little bit easier for you in the setup what i've shown you is the standard setup uh, for sub driver it's 11.1 lipo battery with uh, with three cells um, with the ballast system with a pump and servo as a split channel Safe. So hopefully you enjoyed this, make things a little bit easier for you in setting up your electronics. Thanks for joining me. Watch for more videos in the very near future. If you have any questions at any time, give me an email, bob at rc-sub.com. Check out my website, nautilusdrydocks.com, for lots of cool information, resources, and awesome submarine products. Thanks again, everyone. Catch you later.